Luca Joe here. Today we will be going through one of the extended examples of play of this game. The Last 100 Yards, a game designed by Mike Denson and published by GMT. We will be going through the extended example of play that deals with infantry and mortars. And you can find this in the playbook for this game that you can download from GMT's website. And I have included a link in the description below. The example that we will be going through is found in page 13 and it is 25.1 Infantry and Mortars and we will set up the game as stated in the example. Here we have the uh, units set on the map. The map is map number five. Let's take a closer look. Here are the starting German forces. We have the leader Feldwebel Lang in C4 with a section, section D, and a concealment marker. That's the one with the minus one. And then there are three other sections on top of a hill in improved positions. And these are the ones signified by the minus two marker, which are also concealed. The Americans have two platoons, one under Lieutenant Murphy, that's platoon number one, with three squads and one machine gun section. And platoon number two under Lieutenant Cherry on top of a hill with three squads. And all American units start concealed. It's early dawn, October 1944, southwest of Kolscheid, Germany. A German outpost dug in on Hill 192 has been directing mortar fire against the American 2nd Battalion headquarters. The American 1st and 2nd platoons of Abel Company, commanded by Captain Shaw, have been charged with driving the Germans from the hill. The Americans must complete the mission with a final score of 30 or less to win, and the final score is determined by the amount of time lapse or minutes to complete the mission, plus or minus the casualty differential in casualty points. The first step lost equals four casualty points, the second two casualty points, and each subsequent casualty is equal to three casualty points. Before dawn, Captain Shaw has maneuvered his units into position as shown and he has ordered 2nd Platoon under Lieutenant Cherry to maneuver through the farm complex to threaten the enemy's left flank, drawing his attention and hopefully his mortar fire. The 2nd Platoon is to disperse while advancing to minimize the effects of enemy mortar fire. The 1st Platoon under Lieutenant Murphy is to advance as fast as possible and assault the enemy's right while the enemy is occupied with the second platoon. Feldwebel Lang, although aware of the enemy activity in the woods to his front, has no knowledge of the enemy's strength or intent. Assuming an enemy attack, he has instructed his men to engage the enemy at first sight, keeping them at a distance and disrupting their plans. Also, by committing his mortar early, he hopes to get multiple fires against the Americans before they close in. So it is the initiative phase and the Americans begin with the initiative in this mission and they have a plus two die roll modifier on all subsequent initiative die rolls provided they had the initiative on the previous game turn. First we see if the Americans can conduct a coordinated activation. Here's the coordination table and eight through ten is needed in order to conduct a single activation consisting of two platoons being activated at the same time. So we roll 1d10 and the American player's attempt to conduct a coordinated activation fails with a roll of 5. The third squad, second platoon, maneuvers forward one hex, spending one and a half movement points to enter the woods hex, maintaining its concealment because it is in covered terrain and not within three hexes of an enemy unit. Next, the second squad, second platoon, 
maneuvers into a position adjacent to the stone wall and loses its concealment because it maneuvered in open terrain within eight hexes and line of sight of an enemy unit. Next, Lieutenant Cherry and the first squad maneuver three hexes to a position behind the stone wall, also losing their concealment because they maneuvered in open terrain within eight hexes and line of sight of the enemy. The American player, after completing the activation of the units of the second platoon, calls for reaction from the German player. Generally, units may only react if an enemy unit conducts an action in their line of sight. So the German player reacts by opening fire against the American units maneuvering toward the farm complex. German Section C, having a line of sight to the American 2nd Squad of the 2nd Platoon and yet to conduct an action, requests a mortar fire action against the hex occupied by the American 2nd Squad. The German mortar support consists of a single 8 cm mortar section. The German player places a forward observer marker in the hex with Section C and its corresponding primary impact marker and also a two mortar die roll modifier marker two for the eight centimeter mortar value plus zero for open terrain in the primary impact hex and makes a subsequent die roll to determine the location of the secondary impact hex the Germans roll a 6 and referring to the scattered diagram on the sector they place a 0 mortar die roll modifier marker that is 0 for 8 centimeters mortar value in the secondary impact hex H8. German section C subsequently fires against the American 1st squad and Lieutenant Cherry placing a minus three small arms die roll modifier marker. One for the small arms value of the German unit, minus three for range, and minus one for the stone wall. So the Germans have reacted with section C, and they decide not to react with sections A or B anticipating actions by the yet unactivated American first platoon. So the Germans now call for reaction from the Americans. The Americans choose not to react and this ends the American second platoon's activation. The Americans now activate the first platoon led by Lieutenant Murphy. The machine gun section currently supporting the first platoon fires to suppress German infantry section B and places a minus four small arms die roll modifier marker. One for the machine gun's small arms value, minus two for range, minus one for the defender's concealment, and minus two for the defender's improved position. The American first squad exits the heavy woods and advances toward German section B and Lieutenant Murphy maneuvers with the second and third squads around the woods to the left. The Americans end their activation for the first platoon and call for reaction from the German player. The German player reacts with his unactivated section B and fires against the American first squad first platoon and places a plus one small arms die roll modifier marker one for the German small arms value minus one because the Germans are under a small arms die roll modifier marker that is suppressed and plus one for proximity fire because the Americans are within two hexes of the firing Germans. The concealment marker for section B is removed because it fired within three hexes in line of sight of the American 1st Squad 1st Platoon. 
and the Germans decide not to react with Section A and they call for reaction from the American player. All of the American units have conducted action so the activation phase ends and now we proceed to the fire resolution phase. Players now make a die roll for each small arms and mortar die roll modifier markers in play, adding or subtracting the corresponding marker value to get a final fire result for each fire attack. The number is then compared to the cohesion of the best combat unit in the hex. If the final fire result is greater than the best unit's cohesion, the unit is disrupted and flipped to its disrupted side. If the final fire result die roll is 10 or greater, the unit suffers a casualty and disrupts, and small arm die roll modifier markers are removed as each corresponding fire attack is resolved. We start with German section B. The die roll is a 9 minus 4 for the small arms die roll modifier marker equals 5. There is no effect because the final fire result is 5 and that is not greater than section B's cohesion rating of 6. So the result is no effect. Now we roll for the American first squad first platoon. The roll is a 6 plus 1 for the small arms die roll modifier marker is 7 and the first squad is disrupted because the final fire result of 7 is greater than its cohesion of 6. And the squad marker is flipped to its disrupted side. Next is the American second squad of the second platoon. The roll is an 8 plus 2 for the mortar die roll modifier marker equals 10 and as a result the second squad suffers a casualty and disrupts and that is so because the second squad received a final fire result that was greater or equal to 10 so now the second squad is removed from play now we have to select an infantry section at random so we take the four infantry sections for platoon 1 and we place them in a randomizer cup and notice that they're not all the same. One of them, as you see on the right, has a cohesion rating of 5. So we place them inside a randomizer cup and we randomly select one. And it is section B. And it is placed in the hex formerly occupied by the second squad and we place it with its disrupted side showing. The Americans suffered the first casualty point of the game, so four casualty points are recorded. Now to the American first squad second platoon. The die roll is an 8, minus 3 for the small arms die roll modifier marker and minus 1 for the platoon leader because Lieutenant Cherry's cohesion is greater than the cohesion of the first squad, so the total is 4 and as a result there is no effect on the first squad. That's the end of the fire resolution phase. Now on to the assault phase, but there are no assaults. So we proceed to the mortar fire adjustment phase. All mortar die roll modifier markers are removed. The German player in desperation decides to attempt extending the mortar fire action in the same target hex and flips his forward observer counter to its final side. And now the German rolls one die and needs a four or less to extend the mortar fire action because the Germans have a mortar section. The roll is a three and that is a successful extension. So the Germans place a two mortar die roll modifier marker in the primary impact hex and they conduct a die roll to determine the location of the secondary impact hex. And the roll is a 1 and we refer to the scattered diagram on the sector and we place a 0 mortar die roll modifier marker in the secondary impact hex. The American player, which is the active player, makes a die roll and refers to the time-lapse table to determine the time-lapse in minutes for this game turn. 
The result is a 7, which results in a lapse of 4 minutes. So we move the time lapse marker to the 4 minute box of the time track. At the end of the first turn, the attacker's score is 8. A time lapse of 4 minutes and 4 casualty points due to the step loss suffered by the 2nd squad, 2nd platoon. Now in the cleanup phase, we have reoriented all counters and we leave the mortar die roll modifier markers and the primary impact marker because mortar fire was extended. Now we proceed to game turn number two and we determine initiative. Each player rolls 1d10. The American player will have a plus 2 die roll modifier because the Americans had the initiative in the previous turn. The American roll is a 4 modified to a 6 and the Germans roll an 8. So the Germans have the initiative for this turn. There is no need for the Germans to attempt a coordinated activation because the Germans only have elements of one platoon. So the Germans decide to conduct multiple fire actions and first German section B fires at the disrupted American first squad first platoon and a plus one small arms die roll modifier marker is placed one for the German small arms value there's no modification for range nor for the open terrain the defenders occupy next German Section C fires at Lieutenant Cherry and the accompanying first squad and places a minus four small arms die roll modifier marker in the American hex. That's one for the German small arms value, minus three for range, minus one for the stone wall, and minus one for the hindrance of the mortar die roll modifier marker that is in I-8. Germans having activated two sections now call for reaction from the American player. All units of the American player that have a line of sight to Germans sections B and C may now react. The American 2nd and 3rd squads of the 1st platoon with Lieutenant Murphy maneuver two hexes toward Hill 192. Now the American disrupted first squad of the first platoon attempts to recover. We roll a die and if the result is equal or less to the unit's cohesion rating, it recovers. And the roll is a 10 and whenever an unmodified recovery die roll of 10 is rolled, a non-vehicular unit becomes heroic. And the unit is flipped to its non-disrupted side and we place a hero marker on the unit. Whenever a unit becomes heroic, it must immediately maneuver and assault the closest enemy unit. The American first squad now maneuvers to assault German section B, the closest enemy unit, ending its maneuver temporarily in hex C6, allowing the German player to react in the next call for reaction. And we place an assault marker on the assaulting American unit. And once all reaction is completed, the American first squad, first platoon will be placed in the same hex with German section B and the hex will be marked with an American assault marker showing that the American is the attacker. Next, the American machine gun section reacts by firing at German section B and places a minus three small arms die roll modifier marker. One for the firing unit's small arms value, minus two for range, and minus two for the defender's improved position. The American third squad of the second platoon maneuvers two hexes toward the entry of the farm compound, losing its concealment status. Next, the first squad with Lieutenant Cherry maneuver over the stone wall to the hex behind 
the farmhouse. Next, the disrupted American Section B under mortar fire attempts to withdraw but must suffer the mortar fire attack upon exit. The mortar fire attack die roll is a 5 plus 2 for the mortar die roll modifier marker is equal to 7. So the final fire result of 7 is higher than 6 and the American section's cohesion resulting in another disruption causes now a casualty and section B is removed from play. The American player has now lost two combat steps. The American player now calls the German player to react. The German player reacts with section A and fires against the American third squad of the second platoon and places a minus three small arms die roll modifier marker that is zero for the small arms value of the firing unit minus three for range. The German player now calls for reaction from the American player. Neither side has any additional reaction so the German activation cycle ends. Now the American first squad first platoon is placed in the hex with German section B and the hex is marked with an American assault marker showing that the American player is the attacker. But now play proceeds to the fire resolution phase. We start with the American first squad first platoon which is now heroic with a cohesion of 8. The roll is a 7 plus 1 for the marker, that's 8. So there is no effect because the final fire result is equal to but not greater than the heroic unit's cohesion of 8. Now we resolve fire against German section B. The roll is a 9 modified to a 6. Therefore, section B passes the cohesion check because 6 is its cohesion value. However, if you check page 16 of the playbook in the example, it states that the section is disrupted because the result of 6 is greater than its cohesion, and that is not the case. So we will apply the result correctly, and the unit passes the cohesion check. Now we resolve fire against the American 3rd squad of the 2nd platoon. The role is a 5 modified to a 2, so there is no effect since 2 is less than that squad's cohesion of 6. Now we resolve the small arms fire against Lieutenant Cherry and the American first squad. The roll is a 6 modified to a 2, no effect, because the final result of 2 is less than the first squad's cohesion rating of 5. Now we move on to the assault phase. The heroic American 1st squad, 1st platoon, is the attacker in the assault against German section B. In an assault each player determines the total assault value of their force by totaling the assault values of the units participating in the assault with any applicable modifiers as shown here in the assault value modifiers table. We calculate the total assault value of each of the sides. For the Germans it's 3. First, section B's assault value of 1, plus 1 because it occupies an improved position, and plus 1 for the major contour crossed by the American first squad. The total assault value for the American squad is 4. 2 for the squad's assault value, plus 2 for the cohesion differential. The Americans have a cohesion of 8 because they are heroic. So the resulting final assault die roll modifier is plus 1. Now we roll 1d10. The roll is a 6 modified to a 7. And we look up the result in the assault resolution table and it falls here in the 6 through 9 row. 
we apply the results that pertain to our particular type of assault combat, which was non-vehicular. So, we apply number three and number six. Now the Germans must retreat two to four hexes, and they retreat three hexes. After retreating, the German section now checks for cohesion. The roll is a seven, which is higher than its cohesion rating of six. So we flip its counter to its disrupted side. Now the American squad removes its hero marker and we place a regroup marker on the unit. Now play proceeds to the mortar fire adjustment phase. All mortar die roll modifier markers are now removed, as well as all primary impact markers and the forward observer unit. Note that the German player may attempt to regain mortar support in a later game turn, and to do so, he needs to roll four or less. Play now moves on to the time lapse phase. The American player rolls the die. The die roll is a four, and the time lapse marker is moved three spaces to the seven minutes box on the time track. And at the end of turn two, the attacker's score is 13. Seven minutes plus six casualty points due to the loss of two combat steps of the eliminated second squad, second platoon. And now we move on to turn number three. And both players make initiative die rolls, but the Americans don't have the plus two initiative die roll modifier because the Germans had the initiative during the previous game turn. The Americans roll a six and the Germans roll a five, so the Americans win the initiative. Next, the Americans roll for a possible coordinated activation. A successful coordination would allow the Americans to activate their first and second platoons at the same time before the Germans can react. And the die roll is a nine, so the Americans are successful in coordinating the actions of both platoons. So we move on to the activation phase. The Americans will activate first units of their first platoon. And if we follow the example of play in the playbook, the Americans will activate their machine gun section to fire at German section A. And you can see that the illustration in the playbook has a minus four small arms die roll modifier placed on German section A. The problem is that the correct small arms die roll modifier would be minus five. And that is because German section A is concealed. And when we apply all modifiers, one for the machine gun, minus two for the improved position, minus three for the range, minus one for the concealment, the result is a minus five. And in this game, there are no small arm fire attacks at less than minus four. So that means that we cannot conduct the fire attack that appears in the playbook. It is an error. So instead, we will still activate the machine gun section and it will maneuver one hex to a wooded hex that is nearer to German section A, so that in a further turn, the section can actually fire at that German unit. Next, the American first squad of the first platoon attempts to regroup, that is, a recovery action designed to eliminate that regroup marker, which gives the unit a minus one penalty if it fires using small arms fire. So the American squad has to roll equal or less than its cohesion rating. We roll 1d10 and the roll is an 8. So the American squad fails in removing that regrouping marker. Next, the remaining two squads of the American 
first platoon now will maneuver. Lieutenant Murphy and the third squad maneuver two hexes to the left of the first squad. And the second squad of the first platoon maneuvers two hexes to a position behind the first squad. So all units of the first platoon have been activated because this is a coordinated activation now the Americans activate their units from the second platoon. The third squad now maneuvers two hexes to a position along the stone wall. And Lieutenant Cherry and the first squad maneuver to the right around the farmhouse. And having completed all of their actions, the Americans now call for reaction from the Germans. The German player now reacts by conducting a fire action with German Section A against the American 1st Squad of the 1st Platoon. Minus 2 small arms die roll modifier marker is placed on the defending unit. Minus 2 because we begin with 0 for the Germans small arms value but minus 2 because the Americans are in an improved position. Note that the Americans are in a forest hex, but improved positions are also terrain modifiers. And in this game, terrain modifiers are not cumulative. You use the most advantageous for the defenders. And wood hexes only provide minus one. So in this case, the terrain modifier for the Americans is minus two. Next, German Section C fires at the American 3rd Squad of the 2nd Platoon as it maneuvers along the wall. And a minus one SADRM marker is placed on the American squad. One for the German's small arms value, minus one for range, and minus one for the stone wall. Finally, Lieutenant Lang, along with Section D, assault the American 1st Squad 1st Platoon to drive him out of their improved position. And this eliminates the Germans' concealment marker. We place a German assault marker pointing at the assaulted hex, and we will move Lang and the section into that hex after the fire resolution phase. Note that the Germans have one more section on the map, which is disrupted section B. But note that that section cannot react therefore cannot attempt to recover because it does not have an enemy unit that conducted an action in its line of sight. So now the Germans call for reaction by the Americans. The Americans have no further reactions therefore the activation phase ends and now we proceed to the fire resolution phase. We resolve fire against the American 1st Squad 1st Platoon. The die roll is a 10 modified to an 8, which is greater than the 1st Squad's cohesion. And this causes the squad to disrupt. And as a result of disruption, we remove the regrouping marker and we flip the squad to its disrupted side. Next, we resolve the American 3rd Squad 2nd Platoon. The roll is a 6 modified to a 5, which is less than the squad's cohesion, so therefore, this is a no effect. Now we move on to the assault resolution phase. We move Lieutenant Lang and German Section D into the assault hex, and the Germans lose their concealment status. The total assault value for the German force is 2, that is, 1 for Section D's assault rating, plus 1 for that of Lieutenant Lang. The American force's total assault value is 3, plus 1 for the first squad's assault value, plus 1 for cohesion differential, because the Americans have a cohesion of 6 and the Germans 5, and plus 1 because the Americans occupy an improved position. So in this case, the final assault die roll modifier for the attacking Germans is minus one. 
their assault value of 2 minus the assault value of the defending Americans, which is 3. The roll is an 8 modified to a 7. The result falls in the 6 to 9 row of the assault resolution table. And in that case, this means that the defenders must retreat and retreating units must conduct a cohesion check. In addition, we check for leader loss and any attacking or defending non-vehicular units that are not disrupted are marked with a regrouping marker. So the defending American section retreats two hexes and now must conduct a cohesion check. The roll is a seven. The Americans fail the cohesion check and therefore they suffer a casualty because the unit was already disrupted. So now we select randomly a section from the first platoon from our randomizer cup and the Americans pool section A. So we substitute the disrupted first squad of the first platoon with section A of the first platoon and we place it also with its disrupted side showing. And having the attackers suffered a casualty, we move the casualty marker from the attacker 2 box to the attacker 3 box, which shows that the Americans have suffered 9 casualty points. Having won the assault, and according to the assault result, the Germans now receive a regroup marker. And we have to roll now for possible leader loss of Lieutenant Lang. On a roll of 1 or 10, there will be a leader loss. And the roll is a 6, and Lang passes the leader loss check. The Germans have no more units with which they can react, so now we move on to the mortar fire adjustment phase. And the Germans, desperate for help, now must roll 4 or less to receive mortar support. But the roll is a 6 so they will not receive any mortar support in this turn. Now to the time-lapse phase and the American player rolls one die and the roll is a nine. So the time-lapse marker is moved five spaces from seven to show now 12 minutes. And at the end of game turn three, the attacking American score is 21, 12 minutes plus 9 casualty points due to the loss of a total of 3 American combat steps including the reduction of the 1st squad, 1st platoon in this turn and casualties are mounting for the Americans. Now to the cleanup phase and we reorient all units that were activated in this turn. And now we move on to turn 4. Here is the situation at the beginning of turn 4. Both players now make initiative die rolls and in this turn the Americans have a plus 2 initiative die roll modifier because they had the initiative during the previous turn. The American roll is a 6 modified to an 8 and the German roll is a 7 so the Americans win the initiative. Now the American rolls for a possible coordinated activation. But the roll is a 5, so each American platoon is activated individually. The Americans activate the first platoon first and conduct a fire action with that platoon's machine gun section against German Section C. A minus 4 small arms die roll modifier markers placed on the German section. And that is 1 for the machine gun small arms value, minus 3 for range and minus two for the German improved position. Next, the second squad assaults the position held by Lieutenant Lang and German Section D. Next, Lieutenant Murphy and the third squad assault from the rear in order to envelop the German position. And we place an envelopment marker and an American assault marker in the hex. Notice that defenders suffer envelopment because American units entered the hex occupied by German Section D from two non-adjacent hex sites. Next, the Americans attempt to recover Section A of the first platoon, which is disrupted. 
The die roll is a 7, which is higher than the section's cohesion of 5. So that section remains disrupted. And because there are no other first platoon units to be activated, the Americans now call for German reaction. The Germans, however, choose not to react with their sections A and C, and instead they hold their fire in anticipation of a pending maneuver by the American 2nd platoon. Note that German section D cannot react because it's in an assault hex. And again, German section B cannot react because it did not see an enemy unit conduct an action in its line of sight. So the German player has no reaction and now calls for reaction from the American player. And the American player and then the German player pass on any further reaction. So now the Americans activate the second platoon and they maneuver the third squad and Lieutenant Cherry and the first squad to the base of the hill. And the Americans now call for the Germans to react. The Germans react with Section A, which fires at the American 3rd Squad and places a plus one small arms die roll modifier marker. That's zero for the German small arms value, plus one for proximity fire. The Germans also react with Section C, which fires at the American 1st Squad and places a plus one small arms die roll modifier marker. One for the German's small arms value, minus one for suppressed fire, and plus one for proximity fire. Because neither player has any further reactions, the activation phase ends. And now we move on to the fire resolution phase. And we begin with the American first squad of the second platoon. And the roll is a 3 plus 1 for the small arms die roll modifier marker and minus 1 because Lieutenant Cherry's cohesion is higher than the first squad's cohesion. So the result is 3 which is less than the squad's cohesion and therefore this is a no effect. Now to the American third squad, second platoon. The roll is a 6 modified to a 7 which is higher than the squad's cohesion. So the squad is disrupted. Now we resolve fire against German section C. The roll is a 3 modified to a minus 1, and this of course is less than the unit's cohesion. So therefore, this is a no effect. Now we move on to assault resolution. And now we would move the American units that are assaulting to the assaulted hex. We will leave them there and we will remove the markers on top of the German units to facilitate the explanation. Here we see all the involved units with their assault values. That's the uh, number in the left side encased in a blue square. The Americans are the attacker and Lieutenant Lang and German Section D the defenders. The German total assault value is plus four. That is one for Section D's assault value plus one for the assault value of Lieutenant Lang, plus one for the hill hex they occupy, and plus one for their improved position. The total American assault value is 10, plus two for the second squad's assault value, plus three for the assault value of the third squad, plus one for platoon leader Lieutenant Murphy, plus two for the envelopment marker, plus one for cohesion differential, which is six to five, and plus one because the Germans are marked with a regrouping marker. So we take the attacking Americans assault value of 10 and subtract the assault value of the defending Germans four, and the final assault die roll modifier is plus six. Now by game rules, the final assault die roll modifier cannot exceed 4, so we will add 4 to the roll of 1d10. The roll is a 10 modified to a 14. So we find the results in the 14 row, which is the topmost row of the assault resolution table. 
and we see that the defenders have to retreat four hexes and then they will suffer a casualty and disrupt unless already disrupted. In addition, the attacker may advance into an adjacent hex and immediately conduct an assault if the hex is occupied by an enemy unit. And finally, if there's any leaders, we check for leader loss. So the German units must retreat four hexes and suffer a casualty. German Section D is eliminated because it is a single step unit. And Lieutenant Lang is removed from play due to suffering a casualty. And we place his counter on the time track in the box equal to 19 minutes. The current time lapse of 12 minutes and 7 minutes representing the time required for the platoon to designate a new platoon leader. The step lost by the Germans moves the casualty marker one box to the number two box on the attacker's side. And Lieutenant Murphy has to undergo a leader loss check and survives the check with a roll of four. Now we have all assaulting units in the assaulted hex. In addition, the Americans now can advance one hex and if the hex contains enemy units, they can immediately resolve another assault. And they do so. They assault hex D4 that has German section A. Now we resolve the assault against section A. The German total assault value is 2, 1 for its assault value, plus 1 because it occupies an improved position. The American total assault value is 6, 2 for the second squad's assault value, plus 3 for the third squad's assault value, and plus 1 for Lieutenant Murphy. So the American's assault die roll modifier is 4. We roll 1d10. The roll is a 4 modified to an 8. And the German section must retreat 2 to 4 hexes and conduct a cohesion check. So the German section retreats two hexes and rolls and eight failing the cohesion check and the unit is disrupted. Finally, the victorious assaulting American units receive a regrouping marker and that ends the assault resolution phase. Now to the mortar fire adjustment phase and the Germans make one last attempt for mortar support and they need four or less but the roll is a six no mortar support on to the time lapse phase the die roll is a seven so that means that there's a time lapse of four minutes so we adjust the time track from 12 to 16 minutes and at the end of this fourth turn, the attacking American score is 22, 16 minutes plus six American casualty points. And that's where this extended example of play ends in the playbook. So we've reached the end of this video and you've seen uh, how the mechanics of uh, infantry and mortar fire work in this game but this game brings much more there are rules for armored units and other types of mechanics that uh, we uh, could not cover in this video so i hope that this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer this is the last hundred yards a game designed by mike denson and published by gmt games and this is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.